Originally called the New Negro Movement, the Harlem Renaissance took place between the 1920s and mid-1930s in Harlem, New York. It was a time for cultural celebration and African-American pride. Jazz and tap dancing were main things that came out of this period. As shown in the clip with Cab Calloway and the Nicholas Brothers, both jazz and tap were combined. Though the Harlem Renaissance represented freedom for blacks, the North was still oppressed with slave-like mentality. Yes, slavery was over, but there was still a lot of sharecroppers, which ultimately was another form of slavery because contracts and wages weren't legally fair. The Great Migration began because of the push of the African-American mindset of the South and the push of the new opportunities of the North. Most new African migrants found themselves segregated by in low-class urban slums. The largest of these were Harlem. The section of Manhattan known as Harlem covered three square miles, drew nearly 175,000 African Americans, turning their neighborhood into the largest concentration of blacks. The new Negro concept both meant and signified African Americans trying to represent themselves in a new progressive way, such as politics, culture, and clothing. They considered themselves more refined, educated, and sophisticated than the old Negro, Due to the New Negro, an organization against the concept tried stopping the movement. The organization was called the Ku Klux Klan, otherwise known as the KKK. There was also a created a division between the educated black folk and the grassroots people. Negro vogue became evident in nightclubs such as the Cotton Club and Connie's Inn, and nightlife in Harlem was alive and bright. Josephine Baker, dancer, singer, actress, and comedian. She became known as Black Venus, Black Pearl, and Creole Goddess because of her audiences of beauty. Florence Mills, known as Queen of Happiness, she was an American carbonate. Singer, dancer, comedian, and actress. She was featured in Vogue and Vanity Fair. During this period, W.E.B. Du Bois came up with the idea of the talent of 10, the likelihood of 1 in 10 black men becoming a leader for the race. One point Du Bois made was that anyone that goes to college has the right to use their talent to put it back towards society and help make it better. Four main people that were part of this vision was Langston Hughes, Zora Neale Hurston, Wallace Thurman, and County Porty Cullen. Zora Neale Hurston, 1891-1960 to Zara Neale Hurston was characterized as sassy, yet criticized a lot by not only whites, but blacks too. At first, she was sponsored by white publishers, but they soon refused to publish her work because they believed her writing was hateful towards whites. Some blacks criticized her because she didn't want segregation to end. She liked having a black side, and she liked having a white side. She didn't want things to combine. Some of her most famous work were Their Eyes Were Watching God. Wallace Thurman, 1902 through 1934. He was a ghostwriter for plays, books, and articles. He became the editor of The Messenger, a socialist journal aimed at blacks. He became the first to publish the adult themed stories of Langston Hughes. Thurman left The Messenger to become editor of a white owned magazine called World Tomorrow. County Porter Cullen, 1903 to 1946. He was the son of Reverend Frederick Cullen a civil rights activist and president of the Harlem's NAACP chapter. Cullen was considered a literary prodigy. He became one of the few writers to attend the Ivy League, such as Zora Neale Hurston and W.E. Du Bois. He suddenly died at 42 years of age in 1946. It was considered a very untimely death because he energized the American literacy scene documenting key and social trends. Langston Hughes, 1902 through 1967, was the most productive writer in the Harlem Renaissance. He ranged from novels to plays to short stories, translations, and anthropologies. However, he was mainly known for his poems. He tried to stay away from the regular poetry, regular meaning white, and wrote rhythmically with a tone of blues and jazz. He wanted to reflect society through his art and to make a point to try to change it. 
to make it known what might be seen so nice and so green on one side isn't on the other. This also goes toward the talented tenth. The artists of Harlem Renaissance transformed African American culture and openly displayed their culture to the predominantly white America. Writers such as Langston Hughes' goals were to show that black art intended to express themselves freely no matter what the black or white community had to say. The impact on the Harlem Renaissance was impeccable, although not very immediate.